Hello, friends. Today's sponsor is Leanne Bowen Fine Art. She's sponsored before, and we love her work. She just released a beautiful spring collection of candles. One of the candle packs has a Tuscan lemon candle paired with an orange blossom and a magnolia and rose candle. We love the artwork on the labels and that the scents are really unique. I feel like it's hard to walk into a store and find an orange blossom candle, especially one that has an incredible saint quote or a beautiful painting on it. One of Leanne's other candle sets is a dad pack. It's a combination of three candles designed for your significant other, dad, or father-in-law, or priest. I feel like the men in our lives are kind of hard to shop for, so it's cool to see how she curated gifts that would really be fitting for any of them. One of them is a chrism candle, which smells exactly like the oil used at baptism. I love that smell, and I feel like it's hard to find. We like lighting it in a prayer space and remembering that the Lord is close to us. Leanne also has incredible prints in her shop. One of the favorites is Our Lady of Guadalupe placing her mantle gently around a priest as he lifts the Eucharist. It's been such a consoling image for priests. Leanne makes beautiful wedding and sacrament gifts as well as great gems for Easter. If you're looking for a truly beautiful and unique gift, please visit LeanneBowen.com. That's L-E-A-N-N-E. B-O-W-E-N dot com. She's offering 15% off to all our listeners through May 1st. Just use the code ABIDE15. God bless you. Hi, friends, and welcome to season 11 of the Abiding Together podcast. Abiding Together is a place where you can find connection, rest, and encouragement in your journey with Jesus Christ. Every week, I'm joined by two of my very dearest friends, Heather Kim and Michelle Benzinger, and we talk about all things Christ, about life, about beauty, about sorrow. We laugh, we cry, you'll fit right in. (laughs) So grab a cup of coffee, settle in, and welcome home. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Abiding Together podcast. We are deep into the season of Lent, very, very deep. We're actually almost towards the end, which perhaps we thought we'd never get here. (laughs) Here we go. But here we go. We're in week five of Lent and we are still journeying through um, the Restore book. And we are going to talk this week about forgiveness and we're going to have a deep discussion about forgiveness and we'll see how the week unfolds. But before we jump into that, we've been talking for a while as we always do. So my dear friends, Heather and Michelle, how are we doing? Heather, how's it going? It's going pretty well. Um, the puppy is amazing. I'm just going to say yeah. little Annie, are you our post golden retriever pictures? puppy. Yeah. yeah, I will. I will post some pictures. She's growing like a weed. And oh. it's funny that we're talking about forgiveness because uh, today, because our dogs, like we live on property, right? But it's really rainy this time of year because we have mm. the same climate as like Seattle. Mm. So they are constantly outside getting muddy like four times a day. And so four mm. times a day I have to wash them off. And I'm like, wow, isn't this just a good little reflection of <laughs> just like the muck and mess of our <laughs> life and how so Somebody's got to wash that off. They would be happy to run around and just leave mud all over the house. And I'm like, wow, that's often like how I want to operate, you know, Mm. in my life. But anyway, no, we're having a good time and we're going to be going to visit our daughter who's in Steubenville for Easter. So just looking forward to that. But yeah, trying to just like hang in there the last little bit Mm -hmm. of Lent. How about you, Michelle? Mm -hmm. How are you? I am good. Yeah, we have the last little, a little bit of Lent while we're recording this. But I think we have to be a little authentic that we're in not recording in real time. We're recording mm-hmm. a couple mm-hmm. weeks before. So at this time, Ukraine and Russia, the whole debacle. And we don't know where it'll be when this podcast airs. Mm-hmm. So just the heaviness of the world right now. And mm-hmm. like if the world just needs forgiveness in such a powerful way. But just what the, the power of the beauty of forgiveness and the power of the beauty of our faith. Mm-hmm. I just feel like it's so tangible at this time, more so than it has been in a while. So the last three years, man, whoo. So <laughs> it has been a doozy. Yeah. yeah. But, but good, good. We are resurrection people. So we are Easter people. Mm-hmm. So just keeping that in the front, the forefront of our gaze. Mm-hmm. Sister, how are you? Mm-hmm. Well, I am on the road again. So Lent, <laughs> right before Lent is very busy. So I've been on the road for quite some time doing a lot of events. And so I just have to give a shout out to everybody at Prince of Peace Church in Lake Villa, Illinois. So Barb and um, Father and just all the great priests they have there and just all the people who have come to the parish mission and just been wonderful. So I'm ready to go home for to Texas for a few days. Mm. <laughs> so it's the last like, time you've been home? How long have you been gone this time? 
Oh, I've been gone a couple weeks right yeah. now. And it's been yeah. a full, it's been all wonderful. God's done a lot of wonderful things and, and it's, it is a regular part of my life, but I'm like, I want to go home. I just, people are like, what's the most, what are you looking forward to? I'm like, I just want to go home. Like I just, <laughs> I want to go home and go to my own convent, my sleep in my own pillow and sit in my own chapel and go mm. for walks. And so it's, it's worth it. But I, I like everybody else, you know, I have to be very intentional in how I recharge and how I keep my time with Jesus and to be able to go and do that and to give myself again. So it's been a long trip and I'm already, I'm pretty tired. The nun's tired. Let me just tell you that. <laughs> yeah. So, the nun, she is tired. She is tired. So, well, let's jump into um, this kind of last week of Lent, which is forgiveness. And this is a, a deep topic for everybody. Everybody's affected by this. And this is part of our second week on almsgiving. So we talked about how prayer heals our relationship with God, fasting ourselves, and then almsgiving with others. And we spoke about how last week about how almsgiving isn't just writing a check and kind of making a, a distant donation. It's actually giving the gift of yourself. And one of the ways we can give alms, the, the deep one of the deepest ways we can give alms is actually by offering forgiveness, by receiving forgiveness from the Lord and offering that to others. And so part of our second here is the quote we heard from last week from St. Ambrose, who says, we will never heal ourselves by wounding another. And then what we're going to use this week is Jesus speaking to um, the woman who's caught in adultery. And that's from John chapter 8, verse 11, where he says to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Go and do not sin again. And there's just so much in there as well. But um, ladies, just curious. I know for myself, that's something that I often share in my own story of one of the reasons why I was stuck in unforgiveness for so long is that I had a profound misunderstanding of what real forgiveness was. And I thought I knew. And so I was not open to anything else. But it wasn't until the Lord pierced me and he showed me my soul in a certain area that I was like, oh my gosh, I've been wrong on a lot of issues about forgiveness, what I thought it was. So maybe you guys could just kind of just share in your own hearts when we think about forgiveness or the story of forgiveness and ourselves being forgiven by God and then forgiving others, Heather, what for you or what some things that stand out for you just even in your initial kind of responses to even the word forgiveness maybe? Yeah, what uh, the first thing I think of is just hard. <laughs> like it forgiveness, is. I'm always it, like there's you. a part of me that just goes, oh man, I don't want to talk about this. <laughs> like it's really yeah. hard because, it you is. know, immediately it brings up the things of like that are that are the most painful in our life, yeah. you know, and whether I have been able to forgive or I haven't and I'm still holding on to some things, even, even mm -hmm. if I'm like, I don't want to, but it's yeah. still there and it lingers and it it's sort of festers or, or erodes a little bit of yeah. like just parts of my heart. And so, yeah, it, it's hard. I mean, I think for me, there's different reactions that I have depending on how deep the wound is. Mm -hmm. But I think one of the most familiar things that, that comes to, to my mind when I've been hurt is like what I want to hear from the other person is I'm sorry. And I'm never going to do that to you again. Like I know mm -hmm. what I did. And I'm mm -hmm. going to acknowledge what I did. And I, mm -hmm. it's like a part of me always wants to hear them say, I know what I did to hurt you. Oh, yeah. Because that lets me know you're never going to do it again, or you're going to really yeah. try to not do it again, which gives me that sense of safety. Like that's what I'm looking for in repair of relationships is like, please let me know that I can be safe with you again. Oh, but the reality point. is we don't often get that, mm -mm. you know, and we're not we're not in a situation where we can ask for that. Like, so, I mean, I can ask for that from my husband. I can say mm -hmm. like, do you know what happened so that I could feel safe here again? And I don't have to like hold on to this, but that's yeah. the, that's one of the hardest things for me in forgiveness and something that often hinders me from moving forward is I, I start to protect myself. Mm -hmm. And then that's what makes me hang on to it. You know, it's like, I just need to know that I'm going to be safe. And often I don't in a lot of relationships. So that's where like grace and sacraments and other relationships are so vitally important, which we'll jump into more. But Michelle, what about mm -hmm. for you? What are some of your first thoughts? I like the concept of forgiveness until I'm the one that has to give it. And so <laughs> like, I, <laughs> it's a great quote by C.S. Lewis. Yeah. 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 Like it is. I like that whole concept of, and I want to be forgiven, but it's because I want justice, you know? And it's like, I want that hurt to be made whole right then and there. Like you were saying, I want the acknowledgement. I want mm -hmm. the thing. And I think one of the things I fall into is blame. You know, and blame mm -hmm. is really just a whole idea of control. Like we mm -hmm. want to control the situation we want. And then when I stopped to think about it, I was like, oh, my goodness, this is not a question of right or wrong. You know, and it is not until I can forgive 
that God can bring justice, or, you know, and God's justice doesn't look like our justice, you Thank know, God. where, yeah. yes. And when I think about right or wrong, like that's one of the big things we say in our house. Okay, this isn't a question of right or wrong. This is a question of loving. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying like to fall into the moral relativism, but I'm Mm-mm. saying like, okay, like we have to forgive. And what does it look like to forgive 70 times seven? Mm-hmm. And just the constant forgiveness. But I, the older I get, I realize forgiveness is about my healing and not about the person's reaction. And so, or response, which is such a hard concept, you know, Mm -hmm. like you were saying, Heather, I want you to acknowledge what you did wrong. I want you to tell me how you're going to make it better. And then if you buy me a gift also, it'll be really great. You know, like this is how it's going to work. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so true. I, and I love what you both are saying here. And I, I love, I just want to honor the truth of what you're both saying is because it is, it is natural. And actually it's right to want justice to be restored because forgiveness is about injustice. It's about an injustice. It's about, like you said, Heather, it's about wanting to be safe again. It's about wanting somebody to admit what they've done and to repair and to, and, and, and those are all good and honorable things. And I, I think in our hearts, sometimes we feel like, Gosh, you know, as we get to be adults, we were just talking before we started recording about how old we are, but (laughs) we're like, we're old. But I think as we get to be adults, we run into these places in our heart and we say things like, oh, this shouldn't bother me anymore. Mm -hmm. Or I shouldn't hope anymore. Or they're never going to change. So I'm just going to coexist. And I just don't think anybody in our lives Mm -hmm. really want to coexist with the people we love most deeply. And I know for myself, when I have a hard time forgiving, when I get to the root of it, it's because I, I do, I want to protect myself mm-hmm. and I don't want to be hurt anymore. And sometimes it seems like the only option is forgive and get destroyed or harden your heart and kind of coexist in it. And thank God there's another way through than that, but it is hard. And I, that's why it's a heroic virtue. Like for mm-hmm. truly forgiving is a process. It's not an event and it's a heroic virtue. And it, and it is, like you said, Michelle, it, it's really is giving somebody an undeserved gift. And, and we're the ones, whether they're sorry or not, we're the ones that are set free. So it's like, it's very deep and it's, and the Lord understands those places in our heart. Mm. And I wonder, I think about it when I was thinking about this Lent and journeying through this Lent, I wondered, like, I've been really pondering on the posture of Mary's heart and the power yeah. of women not to be bitter. Because there's Girl, something powerful when a woman's mm. heart remains open and tender and almost formable. Like the Lord can like, you know, really form her heart and keep it open. And mm-hmm. as like a journey deeper with the Lord, he's showing me more of my own poverty, which I'm like, oh my gosh, have we not hit the bottom yet? Like, mm-hmm. come on people. Mm-hmm. And, but he's like, not until you really embrace these parts fully, like really fully embrace these parts. Can I bring resurrection? Not just like excuse them or like toss them to the side, but really embrace these parts. But I was thinking to myself for the first time, like what was Mary's heart like towards the soldiers that beat him? What was Mary's heart towards the Mm. crowd that was jeering him? What was Mary's Mm. heart while she was standing at the cross? Like what was her heart? Like, because I'm thinking, man, there is nothing that will rile me up if someone hurts one of my kids. Like if someone hurts one, I mean, the mama bear comes out in full force. And so like we mm-hmm. had an incident a couple of weeks ago where someone used a racial slur against my child. I mean, you should have felt the anger rise up in me. I was yeah. like, Rah, you know, I, you can see my child's like, mom, don't say anything. Don't say anything. <laughs> I'm like, but, but she didn't. Mm. She stood in that. And she would have had to forgive mm. also because of her immaculate yes. heart. Yeah. And that is how the oh. Holy Spirit works so powerfully through her is her mm-hmm. power of forgiveness. So how do we make all the bitter things in our life, like scripture says, sweet? Mm-hmm. It is it's the power of forgiveness. Mm-hmm. It's the power of receptivity and forgiveness. Mm-hmm. 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 And it's through, I think, part of one of the things that was news to me, um, you know, because I thought forgiveness for a long time was like kind of like just words alone. Yeah, I forgive you. I had never taken a full inventory of what had happened. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the challenging thing about forgiveness is taking a full inventory of what somebody did and how it hurt us, which can be very scary for us. It can be easier to be just like, no, I just forgive you because going down those places, like that's really difficult. And to admit where they've hurt us and to admit the places where we've made agreements maybe with some things they've told us about ourselves or just like those tender places. And it's it. And so what we do is, you know, for, so for me, it was like, well, you know, if I forgive you, if I forgive you, I'm just going to let you off the hook and, and you can't be let off the hook. Like you have to know the deep places. Like you have to know how much I've hurt. And if I forgive you, it seems like you're going to get away with it and you're never going to suffer. I'm suffering, but you're never going to suffer. You seem fine. And like that illusion of, of 
holding on to that grudge or holding on like, like the unforgiving servant, like holding on to the fellow servant, like throttling them, ch- choking them by the collar of their shirt and throttling them. And somehow that's making me better. And, and all it does is just destroys our hearts. And it really is, we've talked about this before, but I, I really believe this more and more in my own prayer. I see it. It is only through lamentation. Mm-hmm. It is only through taking account. It is only through true expression of grief that goes beyond hating ourselves and hating God and hating the other person, coming to the places of distillation where it is like Job, and you're sitting there at the foot mm-hmm. of the cross, or you're like Mary at the foot of the cross, and it's pure lamentation. And as Christ comes to accompany us in those places, that trauma and all the bitterness and all the hatred and all the desire for revenge, that gradually is transformed. And then we become free. But there, I, I wish I could tell people there's there's other way around it, but there's really no other way around it because that's the way of Christ. Like he's stripped naked and he never says it's not a big deal. Like he's stripped naked, hanging naked on a cross. He never says, don't worry, guys, not a big deal. Like you exactly see what it is. And like that, that's, I think, the hardest thing is just sometimes admitting where our hearts have been hurt. Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the road to new life is never void of the cross. I mean, that's the hardest part of the Christian life is that it's always going to go there. Eventually, it's going to go there, like mm-hmm. to a crucifixion. And and that's why, you know, like you were saying at the beginning of the podcast, Michelle, like we're an Easter people. Like you have mm-hmm. to hold on to the hope of Jesus's resurrection and and freedom and life and goodness and everything that he promises, or there's no way that you can go through these things. Mm-hmm. There's no way that you would choose just suffering for the sake of suffering. You know, Mm -hmm. there has to be a purpose. There has to be meaning behind it. And I think for many of us, we don't think about it that way. But sometimes that can be like a a motivator into a new place is like, is there meaning that I can find here Mm -hmm. in forgiveness and Mm -hmm. through this suffering? And and yeah, maybe it's just going to be like right down to like, yeah, the purpose is because I want to grow close to Jesus. And this is about this is intimacy with him. There's barriers Mm -hmm. now between me and him because I'm holding this unforgiveness or anger, resentment, whatever it might be. Because often, like you said, sister, it's not going to involve the other person. It's going to be between you and Jesus at the end of the day. And I think we have to hold that hope of like the resurrection power and new life that's on the other side of that. Like Mm -hmm. forgiveness does lead to new life. It does lead to freedom. It is a release from bondage. That is the truth. And I think the enemy wants to convince us that nothing happens after forgiveness, that we're just actually losing at the end of the day. You know, we're, we're losing like that control or, or whatever it might be. And the enemy is a liar and we just have to call it what it is. But it's easier to do that, like you said, Michelle, uh, when it's about somebody else. Like it's oh, yeah. easier to say that. Right. But But like... You know, as a Christian, we have to be applying these things to ourselves, not just to everybody else around us. So. Mm-hmm. And I love what uh, one of one of my favorite Henry Nouwen quotes. I mean, well, half everything Henry Nouwen says, <laughs> half I love it. But he says, "I begin to see that much of praying is grieving." Mm. You know, and so going back to what you said, sister, acknowledging it, identifying it, because a lot of times we want to forgive and forget, like, Mm -hmm. but really we want to forget and not forgive. I think we want to flip that on its head. (laughs) And so to go back and identify and see it and realizing it, one of the things my counselor always said is, Michelle, work through the emotion. Don't stop and get stuck. Mm Because when you get stop and get stuck, it gets lodged in your body. It gets lodged and all that Mm. stuff. And so she's like, work through this emotion, you know, get to the other side. So that is like... And you do it so well in this devotional, sister. It's such a so beautifully written, talking about the power of our emotions. Yeah. And our emotions are not dictators, like we said before. They are indicators of something deeper, the longing in our heart, the hurt in our heart. But we have to acknowledge those. We have to acknowledge and bring them through and say, okay, what is the deeper question? What is really going on in my heart here? Mm-hmm. And we often laugh. I know, sister, and I laugh. Like when something triggers us, we're like... Bless those triggers because it's just showing me that something else is deeper there going on. Or like, like, and where we said a couple of times on the podcast where we approach it with holy curiosity, right? What's the deeper thing here? What is really going on? And I just know for even this season, like I was like, there was a week there that, I mean, y'all, I was just nasty. Like, I mean, just not a nice person to be around. Like my husband looked at me and said, like, mm. babe, what is going on? Mm. Like, and I was like, I feel like Houston's in the Chronicles of Narnia. I'm the dragon. And I feel like my skin yeah. is being peeled off. Like, and it was just the Lord really just bringing some postures in my heart that were ugly, that needed to be really cleansed, really needed, but they really needed to be looked at the deeper issue. And I don't want to look at the deep the depth 
And I felt like God was just, and I said it previously on one of the Lenten podcasts, excavating parts of my heart that I didn't even know mm. were there. And so it is, yeah. So it's just grieving, but knowing that grieving, like Heather said, comes with resurrection. And so mm. our joy, our sorrow will be turned into joy, but it has to be surrendered. Yeah. Well, and I think we've all seen places in our own lives. I know the three of us have talked about this extensively just in our own friendship of of just real areas of freedom in our life. Mm-hmm. Like things that we receive now. Like I was just thanking God that for that day I was driving in my car and I was like, Lord, I'm so grateful. Like I'm so grateful that even these ma- amazing places of poverty just in the last couple of weeks, you've made s- huge movements of freedom in my life. Like things I, I couldn't even imagine. Like I'm mm. so grateful. And I, you know, I think everyone knows like Dr. Bob Schutz, just such a great mentor to me, such a great spiritual father. And some time ago, I think it was a couple of years ago, I was like going off about somebody, how they were hurting my heart and da, 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 da. And Bob's so great. And he just listened very graciously and very lovingly. And I finished, you know, my kind of rant and my, you know, and it was just, it was very hurtful, like, you know, what this person was doing. And Bob listened to me and he said, um, I hear what you're saying. And he said, it's true. What that person is doing is hurtful. But he said, I'm much more interested in what's happening in your heart right now and what you're believing about yourself right there. What are you? Dang. And I was like, well, I'm much more interested in what they're doing. And he, no. he, he, my, this changed my life. He would not let me get away with it. Like he was like, sister, yeah. he's like, sister, yes, that is hurtful, but I'm much more interested in what's happening in your heart right now. Like, what are you believing about yourself? How are you responding from this? He's like that that is what is most important. And I'm like, that is so, it is so hard. It's cause it's not to say people, what they do don't hurt us. It's not that, but it's like, it's so much easier. Like Michelle, like you're saying to kind of shift the blame. Like, well, if you would stop doing that, I wouldn't be at, you know, versus like, Oh, how is this impacting me? What am I believing about myself? What little place is it pressing upon me? How, you know, it's like, that's mm-hmm. the real work. And Oh, that's, that's a hard place. It's worth it. But mm-hmm. that's a hard place to be. Mm-hmm. It's very hard. None of us want to feel that sense of like, I'm so little. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, this is a place of poverty. I hate that. You know, mm-hmm. like I want to feel like I'm strong, like I got control of things. And and unforgiveness gives you a false sense of control oh, over girl, the situation, you know. That's a good and, insight. Yep. I mean, it's not real, but it makes us mm-hmm. feel that way, mm-hmm. that we have some mm-hmm. power, some control over the other person. Oh, my gosh. It's so complicated within our yeah, own hearts. Is. I mean, and this mm-hmm. is where it's like we think we know ourselves so well. We think we're so justified and in so many things. Oh, maybe we are, but probably in a lot of places we're not to be able to just be little before God is something that it's a hard path, but it's one that brings freedom again, you know, like littleness leads to freedom because Mm -hmm. God is allowed to be God. He's allowed Mm -hmm. to be as big as he wants. You know, when we're little, he can be as big as he wants. And I know for me in areas of forgiveness and just my own sin and all of that stuff, I'm like, I need a big God here. Like I cannot do this. The admission of like, I cannot do this Mm -hmm. has brought more freedom in my life than, than many, many things. I mean, Mm -hmm. so yeah, I mean, I, I just think it's okay to be little. (laughs) Yeah. And I think I look back at my own stuff and I'm like, why do I not want to forgive? And one, we don't feel like God will fight for us the way we yeah. want to be fought for, or he won't bring about justice, but it mm-hmm. comes down to fear. I think yeah. it comes down to fear. Like, will, like Heather, you hit on it. Will I be safe? Will yeah. I be safe? And so like, I realized like, okay, there's deep areas of fear where I still feel like he will not come through or provide yes. or fight for me. And mm-hmm. I feel alone in that. Mm -hmm. And so like even going back to like where that stems from, and usually it stems from something in our childhood Mm -hmm. and the, but the realizing, okay, the Lord was there, you know, he is the, I am, he was Mm -hmm. present. He was there in all of those experiences and he just wants to come in. And it's so much easier to be a fault finder than it is to be a peacemaker. Girl, come on. Mm -hmm. And it is just so much easier, but he wants us to exude peace within him. And like one of the words that I really love about my word of the year, Jubilee is Shalom. Mm -hmm. And that just means, it means peace, but it means also an integration and maturity of Mm -hmm. all the parts, you know, and those parts can't come together if there's unforgiveness, like forgiveness is the glue that really Mm -hmm. puts our heart back together. And so just offering that really as the greatest gift we can give ourselves because it isn't that healing that, Mm -hmm. you know, restoration happens. And so Mm -hmm. 
But man, wouldn't it be nice like if you could have the healing and forgiveness and you can see how like it was rectified. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see how the justice was brought. You show me justice. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. Justice will be served. It just won't be served by us. Thank God. Yes. Yes. We, we are, do not administer justice very well. And, and that's, I, it's so true what you both are saying. And it is true. It is a gift we give to ourselves and it's a gift of alms. And that's the beautiful that we give to others. And the, and the truth is the beautiful thing is that we can forgive at any time. Like the other person doesn't have to be even alive on earth anymore. That other mm-hmm. person doesn't even have to be sorry. They don't even have to know like that like that gift of forgiveness, that free gift that we can offer another person and is something that we can't do on our own. We, we can't do it. Jesus has to give us the grace. We have to ask him. And it's it's instance by instance of what they've done to hurt us. And that's why it's a process. And it's like, we don't have to figure it out on our own. We don't have to make it happen or we don't have to, you know, the emotions can come out. It's all part of the process. It's, it's you know, it's an emotional release, the demand for repayment and and allowing the Lord to come and to be with us in these places. And I don't know if you guys have ever had this experience. I don't know if we've ever talked about this before, but I was praying in my own heart actually this morning. It's very interesting. We're recording this this morning. And like the choice, like the choices we have in our heart in places where our hearts have been hurt to either close our hearts Mm. and just to kind of survive or versus stay with our hearts open. And I was like, Jesus, what does it look like to stay with my heart open. And it's not like, cause sometimes people think either it's like, Oh, I have to go back to an abusive relationship and be a doormat, or I have to totally shut down. And that th- these are false dichotomies. You know, it's like, how do you go? How do you navigate situations? And we all have friendships. Every, I mean, we hurt each other. Like that's just part of human. Like we step on each other's hearts. And so like in our day-to-day relationships, for example, like I was just praying like, Jesus, how do I, how do I stay open to you? Like, how do I open and stay open and allow you to protect my heart and allow you to to come and minister to me and just to be a presence of openness and receptivity versus shutting my heart down? Because I've had moments where I've t- I've shut my heart down and I just get mm. harsh with people, and mm-hmm. I'm like, it just like it just like cuts all the color out of your life. Like I just mm-hmm. and I'm like, why mm. am I doing this? I don't I don't like when I do this. Like, what is it? So Jesus teach me, I don't know, like Jesus teach me how to stay open with a soft and vulnerable and receptive heart and to be honest in this friendship or honest in this relationship or honest, like teach me how to do that because I don't know how to do that. Mm-hmm. Like teach me, you know? Oh my gosh. Mm. I love what you said there. Cuts the color out of my Yeah, mind. it does. So true. Mm-hmm. That's, that's a powerful image to sit with. Mm-hmm. Love that. And I think, yeah, I'm right there with you. I think that's one of the things I've been praying about because as the Lord just excavates parts of my heart, it's more and more open. But if there, it comes in, it leaves me vulnerable. And I said this in one of the earlier podcasts, like, oh my gosh, that vulnerability, there's something Mm -hmm. about it. Like it Mm -hmm. keeps you open, but you're like, oh man, I want to put those walls up or Mm self-protect. And it's almost learning how to live a holy, a completely different way, relating and living a completely different way. So what is it like to take your language? What does it live look like to live in color and not black and white in our heart where it's closed or open. But what does it live to like fully open? And, but like I said before, I think it's so dangerous, especially for women, if we close our hearts because we are the heart, you know, and if we close our hearts, blood doesn't pump to the rest of the body. It doesn't bring life to other relationships. And there is nothing scarier than a bitter, unforgiven woman. (laughs) Oh girl. (laughs) You know, and so it's, it's just toxic. It really does. Yeah. It is it's almost like a form of death, you know. It's true. Mm-hmm. That is true. Yeah, the, the coldness mm-hmm. of a woman is just, you know, it's the, it's the opposite of what we're made for. You yes. know, our sensitivity, as we've talked about in the feminine genius and all of that, like it just takes away something that is inherently feminine. Exactly. To deaden our sensitivities like that, which is the first thing we want to do when we're hurt. Mm-hmm. It's so the true. first oh, so thing true. we want to do. I mean, you could just see the enemy just like subtly swirling mm. around all of these things. And so, yeah, exactly what you said. It's it's those pr- those honest prayers of like, Lord, help me to stay open, to do the things that I cannot do within my own power. And I like, sister, how you distinguish. Like, it doesn't mean that we stay a doormat or that we mm-hmm. allow ourselves mm-hmm. to be in abusive situations. Mm-hmm. Absolutely not. Like, Mm-hmm. We we need to have good boundaries, and there's some people that we might not be able to see again. Yep. But that doesn't mean that forgiveness isn't possible. Boundaries mm-hmm. is not unforgiveness mm-hmm. <laughs> necessarily. Girl, you know, mm-hmm. it can accompany it, but yeah. But boundaries can also be accompanied by forgiveness, and it's just yes. the appropriate. It is the just and right thing to do. Like mm-hmm. if you can't trust someone, then don't act like you can trust them, mm-hmm. you know, there, but there needs to be decisions made. And I, I think that's what we're all saying is that there are choices that we can make in the midst of like the process of forgiveness and healing to just stay when we want to yeah. run. Oh, 
to stay and to and to feel when we want to freeze, you know, and shut down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Our, mm-hmm. our 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 choices are powerful in those moments. Like I've had to yeah. talk myself through moment by moment. Sometimes Heather, do not run away right now. Like stay right here, stay open. Let your heart feel this. Don't shut down. You know, like I'm literally mm-hmm. talking myself through, and I and I yes. think you all are the same. <sighs> yep. You know, it, it's good to be well aware of what's going on and to mm-hmm. just beg God for the grace. Yeah. Oh, this is so rich. It's so beautiful. And one thing we also wanted to do, you'll notice in the Restore book that there's a, I believe it's on Friday, that I lead, I just kind of give you guys a forgiveness meditation. And I'm going to actually record a separate audio of that. So just to, if you want that to accompany your meditation, that'll be in a separate, like a bonus content for this week. But uh, we also wanted to invite you to go to confession. Because, you know, we, we were talking about this earlier, like I've, I've been to every kind of therapy in my life and, and, you know, spiritual direction and inner healing prayer and deliverance and all this kind of stuff. And it's all wonderful and it's all good. But there is nothing, my dear friends, that replaces a good holy sacramental confession. And I just want to say as somebody who represents the Catholic Church, I am very sorry for ways in your life where you've been a confession and that has been a horrible experience for you. Mm-hmm. And I just want to tell you, I'm sorry on behalf of the church. I'm sorry on behalf of the priests where they missed your heart or they said things that were very hurtful or very cutting or just very discouraging. I'm very sorry. And I also want to, in that, invite you to return again. Please do not let the brokenness of one individual keep you from receiving the mercy of the bride, you know, the church, Amen. the mother. So I just, please, friends, like there's so many opportunities in Lent, especially to go to confession. And I just, mm-hmm. I'm not above begging you to go to confession, <laughs> like, because there's nothing in your life, because it doesn't just wipe away your sins. It actually literally heals your soul. It's a, it's one of the sacraments of healing. So it does, it cleans your sins, but it also the grace from every confession permeates the depths of your soul and it heals the roots of why you do what you do. And there's nothing that can replace it. So please go, please tell the whole story. Don't hide anything and just notice what happens in your soul when you do that. Beautiful. Amen. Did, did either one of you mm-hmm. want to add anything to that? Or? No, that's Oh, that great. was beautiful. That's everything. Yep, that's everything right there. Mm-hmm. Well, dear friends, we're going to jump into Holy Week next week, the week of week. And so we will we will climb that mountain when we get there. So, But until we do that, my dear friends, would you like to, Michelle Benzinger, offer to the world your one things for the fifth week of Lent? Yes, I would. Of course, mine are books as usual. Mm-hmm. And one is one that I love and I've mentioned it before is Joshua Elsner. Is that how I say oh, his name? I don't know, but it's amazing. Whatever it is. Um, <laughs> he wrote a book on the Song of Solomon or Song of Songs and it's called A Flame of God Himself. What? And this book is rocking my world. I am not even out of the second chapter because I can't it like every paragraph is like, okay, I'm going to just sit and meditate on this for a while. It is just absolutely Mm. beautiful. And he's the one that we base a lot of the motherhood on his Marian consecration. I mean, his writing is very poetic. His, the theological depth is stunning, but I just cannot say enough about him. And a lot of you all have started to, um, buy his books and whatever, and he's very appreciative, but yeah. It's just beautiful. So it's called A Flame of God Himself. I'm sure we're blowing up his store. <laughs> He's know? probably like, where does this come from all of a sudden? Uh, you know? I know. I know. <laughs> Here we go. And so, but it's really, really yeah. good. That's so. awesome. What about you, Miss Heather? Um, I saw a video a couple of weeks ago that Father Josh Johnson put out, and he Ooh. was talking about black Catholic on the way to sainthood, like holy, mm. holy people in it was so moving to me. Like I hadn't heard these stories before, but just the way that he talked about it and the things that he said, it, I mean, I was like in tears just listening to his mm-hmm. video. It was so, so, so powerful. And um, so anyway, I'm going to, I know he has a whole documentary and it wasn't that one, but there was mm-hmm. some something else. And so I'll put it in the show notes and it was just, it blessed my heart so much. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just want to encourage people to watch it. Yeah. Yeah. There's a beautiful documentary that's coming out too. It was a Kickstarter. We supported it and Mm -hmm. it was, it is, yeah, it's beautiful. So well done too. Really well done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about you, sister? That is, that is wonderful. Well, my um, one thing this week is another piece of art that I came across actually at Prince of Peace Catholic Church and a very simple but beautiful drawing of the visitation of Mary and Elizabeth. And I will share it with our, our audience. Uh, it's just so incredibly lovely. I just have been sitting on that side of the church all week long since I've been there. And every time I walk by, I just literally stop in front and gaze upon it. So I'm going to offer that to our viewers. And I think you're going to like it. It's a very simple style of just, yeah, it's just almost um, kind of 
whimsical in its way of being drawn, but I think you'll like it. So it's just a simple, I love art and such a simple beauty of just the mm, two women cool. meeting each other and rejoicing in the Lord. So it's awesome. So anyway, well, thank you so much, dear friends, for joining us this week. We just, yeah, we offer you just our heart and you're the deep places of your heart. And we just want to honor just anything that this episode brought up. We just want you to um, just to know how much we care for you. We love you and that Christ is always with you, that he will always lead you. He will always um, give you his own heart to walk into these places. So you're never alone. So check out the bonus content of the forgiveness meditation. And we will see you in the week of weeks next week at Holy Week. So until then, God bless you. We'll be biting together a great week. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode. If you liked it, would you please share it with a friend? We encourage you to head over to our website, abidingtogetherpodcast.com, where you can find all the show notes, links to our one things, transcripts, group discussion questions for each episode, and beautiful mugs, t-shirts, journals, and prints on our shop. There you can also subscribe to receive our weekly email with links to each new episode and all of the content. We'd love to connect on social media and invite you to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter so you can catch inspiring reflections every day. You're also welcome to join our private Facebook group and dive deeper into discussions with our fellow listeners. If the podcast has blessed you, would you prayerfully consider financially supporting us? The Abiding Together podcast is only available due to the generous support of our listeners. There are significant costs associated with creating this content, such as tech support, design, website, equipment, and hired staff that we need to be able to continue offering great content to you. Abiding Together is a nonprofit 501c3, and all donations are tax deductible. You can make donations of any amount through a website called Patreon, or you can send us a check directly if that's easier for you. If you donate $15 or more per month on our Patreon page, you become a tribe member and you will receive bonus content every month, such as short videos, recipes, playlists, downloadable prints, and more. You can find all the information about Patreon at patreon.com forward slash abiding together podcast. Thank you and God bless you.